Welcome back. A group of 12 Republican state agriculture commissioners are taking aim at six U.S. banks over their net zero banking alliance memberships. In a letter to top bank executives, state officials warned that these net zero commitments may negatively impact American farmers. Meanwhile, New Hampshire GOP legislators are proposing a bill that would make environment, social and governance, or ESG investment of state funds, a felony with imprisonment of 20 years. Joining me right now is the CEO of Strive Asset Management. He is also the CIO, Matt Cole is here. Strive is offering new 401k retirement plans for medium and small businesses focusing on prioritizing shareholder profits. Matt, great to see you. Hey, Maria. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. You say you want to focus on shareholder priorities. Do you think ESG fits in with those priorities? It doesn't. And ESG is very different than considering environmental risk factors, social risk factors, governance risk factors. What it is is actually pushing a politicized social agenda into corporations. And this violates fiduciary duty in our view that there needs to be an incentive to stop it. And I'm glad to see commissioners pushing back and actually making it illegal to violate fiduciary duty. Yeah, and it's interesting because when I'm looking at a potential portfolio, my, my, my goal with that portfolio is to make money, right? So how have these funds performed? I mean, just on the old performance basis, how does ESG do? It underperforms. It's a yeah. constraint on a portfolio. So anytime you put a constraint on a portfolio, you're either going to do the same or worse as without the constraint. What's really troubling to me is when you see ESG implemented in index funds, where someone doesn't actually even want or know that they're buying an ESG fund, but asset managers push an ESG agenda, a stakeholder capitalism agenda, into corporations at the expense of the actual shareholder. Yeah. At the end of the day, your investment should be working for you, not against you. And ESG actually makes them work against you in multiple ways. And, and companies are seeing this. Investors are seeing this. ExxonMobil is filing a lawsuit against activist investors, Arahuna Capital, and follow this over their shareholder proposals to further curb the company's greenhouse gas emission and target customers' emissions. I mean, ExxonMobil has been in this fight for a long time, and it's actually changed its business as a result of that. But I want to get your take on the products that strive uh, comes up with and, and, and offers to, to address this issue. Yeah. Strive is about shareholders first, period. And obviously Exxon has been at the absolute center of this ESG fight. They had three climate activists put on their board against Exxon's recommendation. In 2022, Exxon fought back. We actually engaged with Exxon, and that's one of the things that we do at Strive is we engage for corporations to put the shareholders first. Exxon agrees with us. They put two new shareholders to counteract the climate activists back on their board in 2022. And now this year you see this shareholder proposal, which I don't even think it's a shareholder proposal. It's a stakeholder proposal to help one stakeholder and it's climate activist. Mm. That has no place in proxy and proxy services. So I'm glad to see that Exxon saying enough and standing up for the shareholders. I mean, doesn't this start at the top, though? I mean, the president and the Democrat agenda puts climate change as the number one existential threat that this country faces, which is really surprising to me because we've got a wide open border. We've got two wars that we're watching. We've got terrorists coming into this country. We're all worried about a potential terrorist attack here in America. And yet the Democrats say that this climate change is the number one existential threat threat to this country. 57% of 322 executives said their companies have expanded DEI programs in the past year, according to the Litters Inclusion, Equity and Diversity C-Suite Survey. Uh, all of this because this administration is putting this as the priority. Is that not right? It's absolutely right. And, and this goes back to day one of the Biden presidency. The second thing that Biden did when he came in office was to get rid of the Department of Labor rule that actually made it a mandate to put shareholders first. That was the second thing after the Keystone Pipeline that he got rid of. So that shows you how important this is. Yeah. At the end of the day, the DEI agenda is not about making money, but it is about incorrect incentives that have been put across corporate America. Well, we'll see how your investors and clients react to these new products. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. Great to see you. Matt Cole from Strive.